You're listening to Ask an Economist from the Conference Board of Canada. The Conference Board has just released its uh, summer provincial outlook. Uh, We have revised the forecast for all of the provinces down substantially from what we had in our spring forecast, our April forecast. Uh, And that's largely because we have gotten a better sense, first of all, of how deep the impacts of COVID-19 have been on shutting down the economy uh, and uh, the repercussions of that very short term that we saw in uh, March and April. Uh, What we're getting a better handle on now is essentially how long this uh, recovery period will be. Initially, we had thought that uh, once we had flattened the curve, once we had shut down the economy and gotten COVID-19 caseloads down, uh, uh, avoided the impact on the healthcare system, uh, we would see a a quicker recovery uh, back to normal. Uh, But what we're, of course, starting to realize is, uh, and and seeing uh, uh, essentially evolve now, now is a situation where COVID-19 is still very much a health risk uh, in on the economy uh, um, and it's uh, es- essentially uh, going to cause us to operate at a much reduced capacity, a very, very bumpy ride uh, until we have a vaccine or a treatment. And we don't see that happening, the vaccine that is, and being widespread in Canada until essentially a year from now. We're looking at spring 2021. That's our informed uh, guess around where, where you know when that will happen. Uh, so still lots of risks essentially with uh, uh, how we emerge from from this crisis. Uh, the implications for the provinces have been very very similar in terms of the initial hit, the shutdowns to the economy. This was a policy choice that was put in place. Uh, with the support measures that have been uh, uh, put forth by provincial and federal governments. Uh, That happened in March and April. Uh, We already saw the economy starting to recover over the following months, and we have continued to see that in, in terms of the employment numbers. But what we're seeing now is operating at much reduced capacity uh, over this extended period of time, uh, again, until uh, COVID-19 is behind us. So the initial impact, very similar. Uh, The impact of the closures, very similar across provinces with some differences in timing as to how quickly the economies have reopened. Uh, Some economies are getting less impacted because they have less cases of COVID-19. Uh, but I think the major differences really are uh, with respect to these, the, the, uh, some of the external impacts. So provinces, for example, that are dependent on tourism are seeing a bigger hit. Uh, provinces that are dependent on the energy sector in particular are really feeling the pinch. Uh, double whammy because, of course, global demand for energy, this is a global recession, um, and uh, the global demand for energy has declined uh, drastically in the case of oil, uh, and that's led to much lower prices, and provinces like Alberta, Saskatchewan, Newfoundland, Labrador, feeling that double hit, double whammy of not only the COVID-19 closing the economy, uh, but this impact on oil revenues uh, and capital investment budgets Uh, from the energy sector in those provinces. Um, Looking at Manitoba, that's a province that's done a little bit better uh, and and because it's done fairly well up until very recently, really quite well at containing the uh, COVID-19 spread. uh, And that's allowed the province to do better. Uh, It's allowed it to open more quickly uh, and uh, the impact on employment uh, employment was mitigated in in comparison to other provinces. Nonetheless, a deep recession in Manitoba, just like everywhere else, just not quite as deep uh, as perhaps some of the other, uh, uh, other provinces. Uh, Turning to Ontario and Quebec, both those provinces are getting hit. Uh, There's been the highest number of cases certainly in in both those provinces uh, and the shutdowns affected not only uh, you know the retail and the tourism sectors um, but also manufacturing and construction in both those provinces. Uh, they have re-emerged, we have seen growth resume uh, but again we're going to be operating at reduced capacity and the implications of Uh, COVID-19 on trade have been very, very important for both those provinces, especially with respect to the U.S. economy. Um, Going further east, the maritime provinces, uh, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, PEI, uh, they've also done fairly well at containing the virus. 
Uh, and so their economies, uh, you know, are, are able to operate a little more openly than, than perhaps uh, Ontario and Quebec, for instance. So, uh, you know, but the hit nonetheless has been severe. Uh, tourism is very important for, uh, for PEI and for Nova Scotia and, and New Brunswick as well. Uh, and tourism continues to be a sector that will see a long, rec a long uh, recovery. Um, and last, I, I guess I can go back west and talk a little bit about BC. Uh, BC has done also quite well at containing the virus. There was a lot of fear early on, uh, but the province has done remarkably well at containing the virus. Uh, employment has recovered. Uh, we are expecting the province to do quite well for two reasons. Uh, one, because the uh, energy sector in BC, that is the LNG, or natural gas sector, uh, is seeing some major projects helping to drive uh, spending in that province, drive investment spending in that province. Uh, the fiscal situation was also perhaps in better shape going into the recession uh, than in other provinces. And so the fiscal capacity of the pro provincial government is, uh, is a little lighter and, and able to do a little more. Uh, and then last, we're seeing uh, some positives in terms of the forestry sector as uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, has actually been very, very positive in terms of uh, uh, lumber prices. So that's helped and that's driving some of the resource sectors as well in the province. O overall, uh, you know, we're in it for a longer haul than initially expected. Uh, we're going to see most provinces not return to normal until the end of 2021. Uh, and that's based on that assumption that I discussed earlier around where the vaccine is found. Let's keep our fingers uh, crossed that perhaps, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, something that we can get through a little quicker. Uh, but for now, uh, we do know that incomes have been supported. Uh, and as we reemerge from this uh, from this crisis, uh, we're hopeful that um, we, we are going to see a, a continued a uh, positive uh, trend for uh, trend of growth uh, going forward into next year. Thank you for your attention.